So another day and another problem. This is what happens when you buy a cheap Ferrari. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. It's a beautiful day here in the UK and I am gonna be jumping back onto a Ferrari I've not touched for way too long. Can you guess which one it is? You might have guessed it right. It was the Ferrari 456. This car has the unfortunate common theme of being neglected. Again, I have not worked on it for over four months now. So it's been sat around and it's time to get it running and the project progressing. Just when you think you fixed the problem on the Ferrari, watch this car is sounded rough as heck. Foot, accelerator, flat to the floor. Zero response. There you go. Fuel, plenty. Response, zero. And here's the strange part about that. Start it up again, second time. Foot. Totally fine. Now, is that an electrical problem or what? So I'm taking the car out for a little drive. Straight away I can feel like I have half power again, gone back to that original problem. Uh, I've got the check engine light on. I did have the slow down light on, that's gone out now actually, uh, but I thought maybe giving it a little run, if you remember before, it would be very uh, intermittent, there you go, there's an electrical kind of noise again as well, but it, was be, it would be intermittent and it would cure itself halfway through the drive, so this car having not been out for three months, let's give it a couple more miles out and just see if we can get any life back into the engine again. Really no problem. It's going through the gears and the motion's okay. But that was a hill. I could really struggle. Really struggle. It's uh, currently again the slowest Ferrari on the road. So I'll put my foot down as we get out of this junction, watch. Foot down. Five thousand. Six thousand. Fifty mile an hour, just nothing. So the question is, what is causing it this time? The car has been sat around for four months and I've barely moved it off the drive. So the good news is the car made it. We did a nice successful trip around. It's been about seven or eight miles I've taken the car. The bad news is slow down light is flashing. I've got half power. Unlike before, it would kind of rectify itself halfway through the drive and be a little bit sporadic. This time I have literally got half the engine the full drive so it makes it extremely difficult to drive probably doesn't do the car any good doing this um, but let's see under the bonnet if we can figure out what is going on check engine slow down are our first port of call one of the first tests I'm gonna do is a very simple quick test on the uh, mass airflow sensors the mass uh, there's two one either side here all I'm gonna do, engine is running, it sounds okay. Uh, the engine tends to sound okay. It's only on startup I seem to have a problem. After that, it's only when the engine is under load. When I'm trying to drive it, I've got basically half the bank. So let's have a listen to this. So if I simply unplug it with the engine running, push that down, you can hear the change in the engine. Try again, ready? We're getting a change on this side. We are going to the opposite side. 
I'll do the same here. Obviously it's inverted so my little connector is underneath. Ready? A bit more difficult. I'm getting nothing at all here. Plug it back in. Give this a little wiggle round. Try that again. You heard no engine change at all there in the engine note. So, I might swap these around on the car from this side to that side, see if it makes any difference. Let's just go into the uh, car and just see the lights on the dash. As you can see, we've still got the check engine light and we've got a slow down flashing light. Got the uh, battery on charge a little bit because we are running a little bit low on juice. That out of the way. So these are very simple to change over. It's just two clips here. Um, we need a flathead screwdriver. Same on the other side. Unclip it and we'll swap them over. So. our first one off literally a one minute job we'll have a look in there I might try and clean it up but first of all let's see how it behaves when we swap them between each side so that's both of the maths swapped over from side to side let's now fire up the car and see when we disconnect the connector on this side if we have any change to the engine noise We still have flashing lights, still got the throttle response. So let's start on this side. Okay, so that seems to be working with them swapped over. Let's try this side again. This one's a bit more tricky. Nothing there, so we need to have a little look to figure out if there's something going wrong here. So as you heard, disconnecting this side again, even though the sensors are swapped over, the maths are swapped over, we had no reaction on the engine. So I'm gonna have a look at this wiring. Uh, before I do so, the next thing I wanna quickly do, another very quick test, is a common problem on the 456s, uh, 355s, and 360s, and all the Ferraris in this, era of these things absolute pile of poo design uh, they fail they cause all kinds of problems generally nothing related to any issue with the engine they're just a very very bad design anyway i'm going to uh you can either swap these side to side but as you do or as i do i always try and keep a spare uh, the good thing about these is they're interchangeable between the 360, the 355, they all run the same part number. So uh, I can take one out of here, but I'm going to try my spare first. In fact, before I do that, I'm going to swap left to right and see if it makes any difference with the engine. 
Really simple, very easy to do this. Uh, like I say, they are interchangeable. They're the same part number between left and right on all the 360, 355s, 550s, and this 456, plus a few others actually. Um, anyway, it's a seven mil little bolt holding that down. I'm gonna take those out, switch them over. Okay, very simple, one minute job. So it's just two seven mils you need. So just to secure the bolt underneath that holds it in and the nut. Um, then it's just the two connectors. They just simply pop off. One and two. So that side's ready. Uh, the green is normally the upgraded ones. Uh, the original ones were a black finish on here. Uh, they were even a worse design than this. Uh, Ferrari did attempt to make them slightly better, um, but I don't think they tried too hard because these things fail all the time. They typically uh, in the UK cost between 250 to about 280 pounds new. Uh, I'm sure in the US are probably even more than that. So let's do the other side and I will uh, swap them over, see if we've got any difference on the okay, engine. Again, on this side, it is the upgraded type. So let's switch them around. I'm just gonna plug them in, no need to bolt them down and see if it makes any difference with uh, how the engine performs. So we still got our slow down light flashing, still got our check engine light on. I don't know, I don't know if it seems a little bit more responsive. I might take the uh, car just down the road and see how it drives. If I've got a bit more, maybe low down power, uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so the drive was unsuccessful. No change at all uh, with the engine or the power. So I'm gonna plug in my spare, which uh, I have to be honest with you, I don't know if this is a good one or a bad one. I should really mark them up. I've got some markings on there, but let's uh, plug this in and see if there's any difference. Okay, let's take it on the road. See what happens. Lights are flashing still. So we've got exactly the same. It's driving, but no real power. So another day and another problem. This is what happens when you buy a cheap Ferrari. Okay, on the next test, so I have got the three pin connector disconnected on both sides from these CAT ECUs. Not the thermal couple, the three pin. Same on the other side. I'm gonna take the car for a little drive down the road and see if this makes any difference and helps me solve the problem. It's getting a bit late here, as you can see. It's a bit dark outside. So I'm not sure how much this is going to come out on camera. We're going to do a quick test. As you can see, still the flashing light, still the check engine light, but let's see how it responds. Certainly that response from the accelerator pedal just sat here seems a lot better. Nice thing about this. There's a nice thing and a nasty thing about this. So we've got the 5.2 Motronic system on this car. The unfortunate thing about having the 5.2 uh, system, the old system, the 2.7, on the dash you would see slow down lights and check engine lights from both banks. So if your left bank was out, you would see a corresponding light on the dash for the left bank, and the same thing with the uh, slow down light, uh, and vice versa on the right bank. Unfortunately with a 5.2 system, there's only one light for both banks. So you are left totally guessing which system is causing the problem? Straight road, here we go, ready? There we go, you felt the car lift off then. There's a lot of power. So, there is definitely something wrong with that system. And it's gonna be one of those components. So I'm just gonna keep fault finding uh, we've run out of light today, so it's pointless me trying to do this tonight. Otherwise, I can't video it for you guys. So I am going to just drive this around for a little bit, but we are back with full power. We still have flashing lights on the dash, but the car is at least driving really well. There you go, guys. 
guys, you can hear that. That baby is pulling, 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 pulling. One of the possibilities with the errors we are seeing on this 456 is we're chasing our tail somewhat. The reason I say that is with the 456 and the Ferraris of this generation, the uh, check engine light is stored in the computer. Now it doesn't matter if you kill all the power to the car, so you use the kill switch at the front there, as I do overnight with this car quite often, um, and I've done this, it doesn't matter if you do it for 10 minutes or overnight, when you power it back on, you've still got that check engine light showing on the dash. The only way really to rectify that is to uh, be able to reset it, uh, you can use a very expensive Ferrari computer system or something like this. This is about 20 to 30 pounds. It's just an OBD2 uh, reader. And uh, there's a function in here where you can reset some of the trouble codes. So we're going to do that. And that should help us narrow down what's actually causing the problem on the engine. So we've got a P600, 1625. quite a few there we go right all right so let's do that uh, I'll have a look at those later but let's do uh, an erase codes currently this is what we have on the dash now I'm not expecting this to go out actually because I have one of the cat ECUs unplugged but let's see what happens There we go, check engine light is out. That's really, that's that's what I was looking for. So that's cool. Uh, now I'm gonna show you a little trick that we can do to stop this slow down light happening and help us research and uh, pinpoint what is actually causing the slow down light to illuminate. Now remember, this is illuminating on my car as soon as it starts up. The next test I'm going to do on the Ferrari 456 is completely bypass the CAT ECU and thermocouple. The idea of this is we're trying to narrow down, first of all, which side is causing my problem. Secondly, which individual component is actually causing it to fail. So to do this, very simple. We have, first of all, some wire, some wire cutters, some electrical tape and something extremely simple, everyday item. Just a 1.5 volt battery. Watch this. Before I start and show you this, I do want to point out this is for test purposes. Obviously, uh, the thermocouples and the CAT ECUs are there for a reason. They're protecting the car. Um, if the CATs do fail, you know, potentially you are going to cause fires in that car. So they are there to protect you from that. Even though they are a really bad design, they work when they need to work. Uh, they just fire up problems when they don't need to. So first of all, we are going to cut two short lengths of wire. We're going to attach them to either side of the battery. We're going to tape it in place and then we're going to go over to the car and plug it in. Okay, there you have it. Something very simple, everyday garage items. Battery there, 1.5 volts, like I say. Uh, I've used a red and a black wire just so I know which side is negative, which side is positive. So let's go over to the car and hook it up. So I've just modified it slightly. I have uh, added these two little uh, fork connectors, cut one of the sides of the forks off, just so it's very easy to plug into the wiring loom. And I'll just show you that now. So just connect it, disconnecting from the CAT ECU and just being able to plug these directly in here is gonna make a lot of difference. Now, these on each side of the three wires, they'll be different on either side, but obviously we have a, a ground in the middle and then we've got a trigger and then we've got a 12 volt. So we want the trigger wire. Uh, so let's try and find that. This is where you need two people when you're filming a YouTube channel. Okay, right, so I'm gonna to attempt to do this uh, myself. Right, so as you can see, this is the connector. It's disconnected uh, completely from the CAT ECU. We have three ca three cables there, three wires, sorry. Uh, black, green, and brown. The fourth one is not used. It's an empty uh, terminal. Car is switched on. Uh, we're on the passenger side here. Uh, we've got the ignition on, and I'm testing the outside. So the middle one is ground. Uh, the outside one there 
is 12 volts. So that is our 12 volt supply. The other one then, the brown one, should be our trigger wire. And there you go. So that is the uh, third cable. That's the brown. And that is our result. So we're going to rig this up with the battery and see if we can get the ETU and the thermocouple to be bypassed by using our simple little 1.5 volt battery. And there you have it. So that is rigged up. So we've got our battery here. This is into our brown trigger cable. As you can see, this is the reason I put these little spade connectors on the end. This one's into our ground. We're gonna switch the car on and see if this bypasses our problem with the CAT ECU. Key is in the ignition, it's in position one. As you can see on the dash, we have our slow down light on and our check engine light. We've just reset that using our ODB2, so hopefully that won't come back on, but we still had the flashing slow down light. So let's fire up the car and see what happens. And there you go. That has bypassed the CAT ECU. It was a good guess. We started on the passenger side and that is where we now need to look at to see if we can rectify what is causing the slowdown light and the check engine light to appear on our car. Okay, car's had a drink. Handbrake's off. Let's do it. So it looks like we've narrowed down the fault to the left side of the car. As a reminder, the right side is still as factory setup. We've got the CAT ECU, uh, we've got the thermocouple all plugged in over there. The left side, we have bypassed that system by putting our 1.5 volt battery in line. Uh, so we are hopefully looking to deep dive a little bit more in that area. We're looking at the thermocouple. We are potentially still looking at the CAT ECU. The spare one I tested, I don't know what the history is on that one. It was off the shelf. Uh, it's been in the garage for a long time, so it might well be faulty. So we're looking at those two. We're also looking at the CAT itself uh, and that system. There's a potential that this is a genuine problem with my CAT. So we're gonna deep dive a little bit further into that next. Typically with problems like this, with Ferraris of that era, what you often see is owners will just throw parts at the problem, waste a lot of money in the hope that it will fix the issue. Hopefully what you will see uh, with the troubleshooting I'm doing on this one and in the next video, it will give you a bit more knowledge how to narrow down the actual root cause of a problem, save yourself a lot of money in the process and give you a little bit of knowledge how the system works. Anyway, guys, I've run out of time today. I'm going to wrap this video up. Join me next time when I'm going to dive deeper into that problem. Try to pinpoint the actual issue and the component that is causing it. And hopefully have a little bit more time to talk about some of the other issues on that troublesome stallion. Such as that suspension uh, that is still, still bugging me. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel. If you're not already, you can follow me over on Instagram, where I try to keep everyone entertained with a few pictures here and there. Uh, thanks again for watching, guys. I will see you extremely shortly in the next one. Ciao for now.